Let's have a look at taking our conceptual design through to a design phase. So I've sketched my conceptual design and I've loaded this into my project, which you'll see has my um, aerial or ortho drape. Um, I have a mass floor schedule because I want to actually use this conceptual design to work out my floor areas and volumes. So if I simply select the mass, you'll see my mass floors and we can pick our levels 1 to 17. If I tick them and hit OK, you'll see the mass floor schedule will be created. Give me the exact floor perimeter, floor volume, exterior surface. So I can take this forward as part of my design. But what happens if my design's changing and I want to maximize the area? Again, I could go back into my conceptual model and I could start tweaking and changing parts of my building model, the suit. So I could start looking at individual elements um, how I can maximize some area. We could be limited at the bottom due to planning space, but we could maximize this in the top. Again, if I save the file, what I can do is load this into my project. I'll be asked to overwrite the existing family. Um, so I'm going to overwrite the existing version and the mass floor schedule uh, will update. So will uh, the actual conceptual model. So again, you can see the updates being applied. So it's a fantastic method if we need to change our design. But what happens if we've got more com uh, complexity? Um, say we might want to add in another conceptual model that actually has parameters. Well, let's take a look at this. So I'm going to open a file um, that has a conceptual sketch with parameters. What this simply means is that um, if I actually have a look at the types of the family information in here, we can change the data behind it. So say if I wanted to make the length 50 meters, the height 70, and D1 value say 19 meters. If I hit apply and OK, the model again will update, which you can see in the background. Let's load this into the current project. Overwrite the current selection. Now this isn't currently our family, so what we're going to do is view and tile this. So let's take a look at this. This is my new family component uh, that actually has the parameters applied. So what I'm going to do is select the existing family and I'm going to change the element out to design A parameters. Again, you will see the mass floor schedule automatically update and the shape of the building automatically update the suit. This allows me a greater degree, degree of flexibility because I don't need to go and revisit this family every time. In fact, I can simply quit out of it. So if I select my family in the actual model, I can actually look at the element properties and say let's change this information on the fly. So let's make the building 50 meters for the length. Let's change the height. Let's change the D1 value. If I hit OK, the mass floor schedule and the model will automatically update in the background. So you can see very quickly from taking your conceptual model, um, we can simply sketch the model, load it into the family and start applying this to mass flow schedules. If we're a bit smarter, we can add parameters to it because our design might be adapting and changing along the way. But how do we get this information and actually make it part of our design, i.e. get the walls, get all the other information into this? Well, let's have a look at this. Uh, what we're going to do here, I've got my final conceptual design that I'm happy with and I need to change various bits and pieces of information. So I want to start adding floors to this. So we're going to have a look at um, massing in site. We're going to model this and we're going to add some floor components in. So we're going to pick on the individual floors. Again, we could use um, our filter tools in here or I could use a window selection. I'm simply just going to pick down them because these are my floors. When I get to the bottom, I'm going to go create floors. I would change the type of floor and it's just put in a 225mm slab. So if I want to actually go and create my roof, I could go in here and say let's create a roof. Based on this component, we'll create the roof. If I have a curtain wall system that I want to create, again we'll model by face. We'll create a curtain wall, in this face, this face, and this face, and we'll create our system. It's the same for my external walls. Let's have a look at these external walls in here. Um, I will change the location line. Let's make this interior. Again, that's putting on my external walls 
along the building. So very quickly, I've went from conceptual design where I have my actual building components in. Uh, under my massing, I can take my show mass off because I don't want to see the mass components. If there's an area I've missed out, like here, again, we can go back in, model by face. Let's make that wall and select that element. Two elements there were joined together. I've just simply unjoined them. Again, we'll take our show mass off. So there's my actual finished model. What happens if I wanted to add a staircase in? Because all my floors are the same level, we can look at this in our first floor plan. Let's take this back to wireframe, hide out the aerial photograph, and let's look at applying a multi-story staircase. Um, we'll go to our stairs and we'll change the stair properties. We know that our base, the top level, should be level 0 to level 1. Let's make the multi-story to level 17. And we simply put in our staircase using the various parameters that we'll require. And when we're finished, we'll hit finish stairs and our staircase will be created. You'll see this in our 3D model. It's being created through the floors. But I need to create a cut or a shaft. So in here, I'm going to go to modify. We're going to create a shaft opening. And again, we're going to change the shaft opening properties. I want to go up to the 16th floor in this case. And I'm simply going to use line work to sketch in my information. When I'm happy, I have finish opening and I've got my opening throughout my stairs. Let's take a closer look at that. We'll create a quick section through the building. So we'll go to view, create a section across here, drag our section line. Let's make a quick duplication of our 3D view and go to that view because what we want to do is orientate to the section. So very quickly, I went from conceptual stage right through to my design stage. And now I would go individually and edit each of these floors. Again, I could go back and change my original design um, of the actual conceptual model. And I can remake the building components very, very easily. Uh, that's uh, having a look at conceptual design in Revit Architecture 2010.